Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today we are testing some water cooling, the Frozen Vision 360 from Thermalright. And yes, it's a first for the channel as far as testing water cooling goes, so let's go. So why an all in one test? Well, simply because I wanted to do something else than just testing CPUs and GPUs. And given that the products we are talking about today is pretty disruptive for the market, as it often is the case with Thermalright products recently, mainly because their coolers often come with a very attractive price to performance ratio. And so this Frozen Vision 360 is also one of those products which get a pretty aggressive pricing compared to the competition. Because here you get a 360 all-in-one with a touch of RGB on the fans and also the most important bit, an LCD screen of pretty good size and fairly decent quality on the water block for a price of about 150 euros in black or white. So yeah, once again, Thermalright is bringing a product with features that are usually much more expensive. Similarly sized all-in-ones with a screen like this one often are about two times more expensive than this. So the question is, is it because it gets some kind of problem or is it a plain good deal? Well, first, I think we can all agree that this type of product are mostly bought almost only for the looks and for this one, especially for the screen, because if you just aim for price to performance, you can find some all-in-ones without screens at a much cheaper price and even Thermalright sells some for less than half the price of this Frozen Vision. So as far as good deal goes, it depends mostly on what you want to do for your build and your budget. And as far as looks goes, it's pretty decent, even if there are a few small details that could be improved on. Because if you look at the fans, you can see that the Thermalright logos are on the wrong direction if you do a classic build, since the brand name is pointing towards the radiator rather than towards the case. It's a small detail and you have to get real close to see it, but once again, it's a product that you get mostly for its looks, so small details do matter. Even if yes, we have to keep in mind that it is a 150 euros product. Another thing I don't really like is the guide for the tubes. Personally, I'm not a fan, but it can be removed, so at least you have the choice here. Not exactly a deal breaker. And more annoying for me, on the other hand, are the cables for the fans. It's a proprietary format for the connectors. Even so, Thermalright produces the same fans with classic connectors. And what's annoying here is that if you get a problem with just one of those fans later on, it may be a bit difficult to find this exact model to replace it down the line. Thermalright until now tend to release a lot of products pretty quickly and the biggest weakness for them is that we don't really have a lot of feedback on reliability on their products, whether it's the fans or the all-in-one pumps. Good news for this Frozen Vision so is that you get a 6 years warranty, which is pretty good, but yeah. If you have a problem with one of those fans, you can always change them for some other brands or plug another one on the motherboard, so it's not that big of a deal, but still it would have been better to get some normal connectors and not a proprietary one. And another issue with those fan cables, as you can see here, is that they are pretty long and they are hanging rather low. I mean, you can hide them behind while building your system, but those dangling connectors aren't the most practical or good looking. I mean, as far as dangling goes, it feels like a trip to some middle-aged men's saunas where all the towels are too short, which is <laughs> not great. And cable management-wise, we also have quite a few cables, including an internal USB plug for the motherboard, so it's probably going to take a bit of tinkering around to end up with something clean-looking. So all in all, looks-wise, there is some good and bad points, but once again, given the price, it's difficult to really, really complain much. It's not the cleanest, but you can manage to hide most of the annoying bits, so it's okay. Not great, but okay. And as far as the screen itself, well, I find it rather nice, even if I would have liked to not have the Thermal White logo on it, since depending on the side you will install the water block, the logo will not necessarily be on the good side, which is a bit of a shame. The screen is an IPS LCD panel in 480 by 480, 2.88 inches, and I think it looks pretty neat. Sadly, I can't really compare it with some of its competitors since it's the only AIO with a screen I have seen so far, but I don't see much to complain about the screen here. Mounting and compatibility wise, in the bundle you get some kits for LGA 1150, 1200. 1700, 2011, and 2066 for Intel, and AM4 and AM5 for AMD. That's a lot of kits, and that's pretty cool. You also get some thermal paste in the bundle. I only test the LGS 1700 kit, and overall, the installation is pretty straightforward. And good point for thermal right here is that you get a manual in the bundle. It's not huge, and you only get two languages, but paper manuals are not all that common anymore, so that's still a win in my book. 
but well, that's about it as far as looks goes, let's see how it performs now. As for the test protocol, well, since it's the first for me, I kept it pretty simple. It's a 4700K running at 100% with power limits cap at 250 watt, 200 watt, 150 watt, 100 watt and 65 watts and a temperature reading after 30 minutes in a room at 23 degrees. And for each power level, the fans are going at 100%, 75, 50 and 25%. I also did the same test with my Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, 280, so we can compare to something else. But keep in mind that the fans of the Liquid Freezer 2 rotate much lower than those of the Thermalite, as you can see here on the noise chart at 1 meter from the test bench. We can see that at 100%, the liquid freezer runs at 1500 RPM compared to around 2200 for the Thermalite. And at that speed, the Thermalite is much, much louder. So as far as noise goes, I found that at 25% speed, both all-in-ones are barely audible. At 50%, the Arctic is still very quiet and the Thermalite can be heard, but still pretty quiet. On the other hand, at 75% speed, it becomes clearly noisy for the Thermalite and kind of audible for the liquid freezer and at 100% well numbers speak for themselves both are noisy but the thermal white much more so so ideally if you want something quiet better ham to use the frozen vision at 150% fat speed otherwise it can get pretty noisy let's move on to the temperature on the load at 250 watts the graph is kind of strange i know mostly because the cpu is throttling with both all-in-ones so even with the fans at 100%, if you see around 80 degrees, which seems good, it's because the processor throttles down and lowers its consumption, which makes it fluctuate between 230 watt and 250 watts on both AIOs. At 75%, you get the same thing. At 50%, we lower the consumption by another notch. And at 25%, you end up at around 200 and 210 watts. But the CPU is getting higher temps on this test. So yeah, we know the latest Intel CPUs are difficult to cool properly at max power and here at 250 watt at full load, both coolers are struggling with them. At 200 watt, as you can see here, both coolers are doing much better. At 100% fan speed, no problem for both AIOs, even if clearly the thermal right is doing much better, but at the cost of much higher noise levels. And at 25%, it's a bit more difficult for the liquid freezer. It's throttling a little, but all in all, both AIOs can manage this load, even if, depending on your fan curve, it may not do so in silence. At 150 watt, unsurprisingly, things are pretty good for both coolers, and even at 25% fan speed, the frozen vision stay below 70 degrees. At 100 watt, no issues for both coolers. We remain under 60 degrees for the frozen vision and below 70 for the liquid freezer. And at 65 watt, it's a quick walk. The frozen vision doesn't go above 50 degrees and the liquid freezer stay below 60. So yeah, performance wise, the frozen vision can manage even the biggest CPUs, even if obviously the 13th and 40th gen i7 and i9 are still a challenge and it will likely throttle above 200 watt here. It's not the end of the world, unless you are encoding videos 24 seven or doing other EV loads all the time on all cores, but for most users, it's kinda rare to push your CPU that hard, even if it's throttled down once in a while, it's not the end of the world, the processor will regulate itself and lower its power consumption, and as long as you don't push uh, too much voltage into the chip, it will most likely be just fine. Personally, I like to set a lower limit for Intel processors, at around 175 watts, you don't lose much performance wise, and it prevents your computer from going to stupid fat speeds to keep the temperatures down, which is kind of annoying. I don't like when it gets too noisy. And for gaming, outside of shader compilation, you almost never go above 200 watts, as you can see from my 14th gen reviews, and both coolers will manage just fine, as we just saw here. But still, if you plan to buy the Frozen Vision, I think it's better to keep your fan curve at around 50%, because it gets noisy pretty quickly above that. And last but not least, the software for an all-in-one with a screen, it's kind of a big deal and it's clearly something Thermalite have to improve on here. Because so far, the app is not the easiest to use. On first launch, default language is not even English, so you will have to blindly look around to find where you can set it to another language. And the app itself, even if it's functional, the logic in profile management is quite strange. And as long as you don't get it, you will be left a little confused for a while because as you can see here, 
on first page, you get a bunch of themes that you can customize. You can also add your own pictures and choose to display different system information and so on. But if you want to edit a theme because it doesn't display at the right angle, you will have to look for set background. Then to rotate properly, you have to use the Tamar White logo on the screen as reference. In my case here, it's on the left, so you have to use a 270 logo left setting, save the team, and then you have to go back to the presets page, select the new preset, and click to save so that it finally ends up loading on the screen. Same stuff if you want to do your own team. I went to get a random GIF on the GIFI home page, and same as earlier, you have to faff around to get it to display properly and rotate it the right way and then you can change the text color and information i set it to transparent and well it ended up bugging out but the picture loaded fine perhaps i made a mistake here but yeah that's more or less how it works but since nothing is really explained all that well it will be a lot of faff around and find out personally i would like to see the changes directly on the screen while editing and just to have an undo button to go back on the last couple of changes, rather than having to go to the edit page, change a bunch of things blindly, go back to the main page, load the profile, see if it works, and then go back to the edit page again to edit stuff if it doesn't. It's really, really not user-friendly, even if, yeah, you can get it to display what you want in the end, but it's a bit of a pain. Even the picture cropping doesn't always work properly, so you may have to use some other editing tools to get what you want in the end. I heard that Tamil Wright is working on the app to improve things, but clearly the software is not good enough and I hope that they will update it quickly. So yeah, the big weakness for this present vision right now is mainly the software. The aesthetic issues could be improved on, but it's mostly fine. And for 150 euros, I think it's not a bad deal overall, but if the price was any higher, it would lose most of its appeal to me. Because if you look at reviews for similar products from other brands, they are often a bit more premium feeling and with much better software. So if this frozen vision had been any more expensive, it I wouldn't recommend it. But for 150, it's fine. The cooling itself is good. The aesthetic issues can be worked with. The software sucks, but you can manage, and all those downsides help yourself have the price of something similar. I think it's pretty fair, and even if it's not as good as some of the other Tamarite products, I think it's decent, but not amazing. And I think we are done with this Frozen Vision 360. Hope you enjoyed this little review. It was the first for me, as far as Wolverine Coolers goes, and if you enjoyed it, I will see if I can translate and upload more of my work to English as well. And if you want to help and support the channel, you can do the usual YouTube stuff. I also have a coffee page for the channel if you want to support me directly. And a big thank you to all those that do. It helps keep the channel alive. So see you later for another video. Take care of yourself. Bye.